well. <clears throat> I've taught remotely for a number of years now and I have students all over the world. The impact of COVID-19 has meant that we have all had to adapt and flex what we do to find some kind of normal and enjoy our hobbies and interests and even discover some new ones. If you're interested in starting Zoom lessons with me but are unsure if they would work for you, here's some of my existing students sharing their thoughts and experiences with you. Tell me how you found the setup and use of Zoom and how do you find the audio quality in the lessons? So I find Zoom very easy. I, I mean, I use it for business anyway. So transferring that to doing a sax lesson was really simple. It's simply hit a button and, and there you are. So, and the audio has been great. As long as there's no background noise here, haven't had any issues at all. It's been really clear. Right, I found it um, really easy to set up. Obviously you've got to download um, Zoom. And once you've downloaded Zoom, it's so simple. You know, Steve sends me an email, I just click on it and it just comes up. What's your favourite part of the lesson? My favourite part of the lesson, well, clearly it's the scales and the technical stuff that sit around it. <laughs> My favourite part of the lesson is around the, um, the banter that you can still have. You, that's no change to that. I really enjoy the... Um, the friendliness of the lessons and I and the content you can change and adapt the content as you as you go through the lesson itself so if you're having a particularly good day you can ramp it up if you're challenged on something you can go over things for a little bit longer um, I guess overtones I really enjoy doing overtones and um, I like doing the long note just to see how well I've progressed over over the time in the absence of coming to see me here in the studio, what's the one thing you would change about your Zoom lessons? Well, obviously for me being in Boston, uh, it would be very hard to get to your studio. Um, but I mean, it, other than, I, I, I wish um, uh, we could play together at the same time, but you solve that by sending videos that I can respond to, right? So, so at the end of the day, I still get to play with you. We still get to do it. So. Um, it makes it makes it feel pretty much the same. I'm actually thoroughly enjoying the Zoom lessons. There is nothing now. It saves me time. Uh, you know, it gives me back an hour in the day. I used to enjoy the drive down, but um, th there's nothing I'd change really. Tell me how your lessons inspire you to play and practice. Uh, I'm really inspired to practice and play between lessons, partly because when I come to the next Zoom call, you've got this very sneaky knack of just stepping it up in terms of levels of difficulty. <laughs> so I know if I get my 15 minutes in every day that I'm going to be able to at least have an attempt on the next thing you give me. So you're kind of constantly just pushing it, but within my uh, range. So I, I, I am really, I think probably more inspired because of that continuity that I've had and being able to record the Zoom um, lesson as well. I've been playing them back and watching it, which I wouldn't have been doing face to face. All of my lessons have always inspired me to practice and play regardless of the platform. This is just a different way of doing things. My, um, my lessons particularly um, give me the opportunity to explore other things around my saxophone, around my understanding of some of the technical stuff that goes on. And uh, as soon as I come back from a lesson, wherever it, whatever time of day it is, I just want to pick my Zax up and play. It's, it's as simple as that. How do Zoom lessons with me compare to free lessons on YouTube? Well, I've only sort of come across two um, things. One was somebody telling me how to play in the mood. Um, it wasn't so much a, a lesson as such. It, well, she, she had about 15 minutes of telling me, and I couldn't, I couldn't get the rhythm right of in the mood. And then listening to her, she, she did it, but she didn't really address the issues that I got actually. And then the next lesson I asked you, and you said, yeah, you need to do this. And that, I think that solved it actually. The thing is, your lessons are tapered to where I am actually, what, what I need, you know, what you can see of where the problems are. You know. Oh God, it's, it's, it's completely different. I mean, there's nothing wrong with free lessons on YouTube, but first of all, in, on YouTube, it's, it's almost impossible to find a path that you can follow. It can be that what they're showing you, it may be too basic or it may be too advanced and, and you never know when you're landing in it, right? And I find it very discouraging if I, if I try to do something that it's too advanced for me, that gradient gets broken and I can't follow it. If you could give one tip to a student considering using online lessons, what would it be? This is a great question. My one tip to any student coming to, to lessons of any description with you, Steve, would be just be brave and do it. 
whether it's coming across a threshold into the door or coming across a different um, screen, just be brave and get stuck in. What are you waiting for? I started the online lessons way before we were stuck at home. Uh, and obviously there are sax teachers in Boston, um, but it, it still works for me, works for my schedule. And, and I don't feel that I'm missing anything that I would get otherwise on a in-person lesson. Yeah, one point about carrying on with lessons, Zoom lessons, while this lockdown's on especially, is if you don't have lessons, you won't, you'll lose interest and you won't practice as much as you should do. By having that one lesson a week or one every two weeks, whatever, it will make you play more without a doubt. And so uh, that's, that's the most important thing to keep playing, keep playing and practicing. A new Zoom student, okay, this is a really sneaky thing to do, is to uh, make sure that you put your scales just to the side of the screen and Steve can't actually spot that you're reading them. <laughs> That's if you're having a rough day. <laughs> <laughs>